Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and uh, this is a special episode. Um, basically, since that nobody actually has chosen the dinosaur, since I like should be picking the dinosaur for today, and the dinosaur I actually picked is one of my favorite predatory dinosaurs, and uh, not not as high as Tyrannosaurus Rex, because Tyrannosaurus Rex is my number one favorite dinosaur of all time. But it's actually a dinosaur that actually lived before the Cretaceous. It lived before uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was actually in the early Cretaceous, and that would be Acrocanthosaurus. And Acrocanthosaurus in Latin means high-spined lizard. And its remains have been found in Texas and Oklahoma. And so it's actually what we kind of. I would like to say it's a. Uh, the big southern lizard, the big southern dinosaur, predatory dinosaur, and uh, there are some other teeth, but there's been some teeth that have been found uh, in the areas like in the East Coast, like in Washington D.C. It's especially what Dr. Tom Holtz has actually said, um, but it actually lived 125 million years ago in the early Cretaceous, and also it's actually 40 feet long and probably could have weighed between uh, four to six tons. Now, since the Acrocanthosaurus is almost the same length as Tyrannosaurus rex, it is not the same. It's not the same size as Tyrannosaurus rex. Acrocanthosaurus is a little bit smaller than Tyrannosaurus rex, but even though it's actually still a very effective predator, and if you actually go to this, uh, if you actually go to this park in Texas, it's near Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, I forget it's the Dinosaur Dinosaur Freeway. Uh, uh, state Park in Texas, and uh, it's actually it's actually got tracks, a uh, dinosaur tracks, and it's actually telling a story. Basically, you have sauropod tracks and acro and possibly Acrocanthosaurus tracks. And what we actually see here is that the tracks of the sauropod actually kind of almost move in a kind of a fast paced kind of way. Now, even though sauropods are relatively slow, but even though they are, they can actually kind of trot uh, a little bit. But what what we also see is that the predator tracks are actually following along the sauropod tracks, and these tracks actually give indicate that the hunter is actually trying to kill its prey chasing after its prey and that shows behavior and that's amazing to actually think about that behavioral uh, fossil remains basically just trace fossils though not actual bones or anything like that that have been found there but basically it's just uh, it's to show it's to say that it actually told the story of basically that a predator actually chasing its prey, trying to hunt down its prey. And what Acrocanthosaurus is actually, and since Acrocanthosaurus' main, main feature is the high spines that are actually along from its neck to, the, to its hips. And this actually shows that this actually had a, a distinct ridge on its back. Now, I wouldn't say it's actually for thermoregulating, because since that there's no vein. There's probably not any blood vessels that actually would have actually, because uh, you see, you would you would need thinner spines in order to actually have like a thermal regulator uh, to do that. Whereas Acrocanthosaurus has got thick uh, spines that probably wouldn't have actually had done that. It probably was for to make itself bigger and also probably to uh, <laughs> probably for uh, display, probably species recognition. So that actually is probably. Maybe the main reason why it actually has that high ridge on its back, and also the interesting thing is that the neck, the neck vertebrae, they actually lock into each other, and that actually shows that it actually is an effective way of actually snapping at its prey. So once the Acrocanthosaurus locks its neck, it actually has the ability to make a make a big bite out of the out of its prey. Now with Acrocanthosaurus, in terms of its jaw strength, it's actually not very strong. It doesn't have a very strong bite. It's because its teeth are very thin. And once you have very thin teeth, you're actually going after prey that is larger than you. And you need to let it bleed out. 
is if you're trying to go out, because if these teeth are actually trying to hit the bone, if they try to bite hard enough to get into the bone, these teeth will break off. These teeth will break off. They might leave a mark on the bone, but it wouldn't actually go through the bone. That's why Tyrannosaurus rex actually has, has very conical teeth. So that's why almost conical teeth, that's why it actually has very thick teeth. Tyrannosaurus have very thick teeth. Whereas Acrocanthosaurus belongs to the family group of Allosaurs and also Carcharodontosaurs. It's probably somewhere in between uh, the distinct the lineage of Carcharodontosaurs and Allosaurs. And so what we see here is basically is that since that there's large sauropods uh, that actually were still around in the early Cretaceous and since that uh, because since that the prey animal that is very common in, in Oklahoma and Texas at that time is Poloxysaurus. And Poloxysaurus is a very well-known uh, dinosaur in Texas. And that's why it's actually the state fossil of Texas. So that's why it actually is... That's why everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> but uh, since I'm from the Midwest, I gotta, love, I gotta love my northern... I gotta love my region. But even though that... Acrocanthosaurus is a very powerful predator. It does have very large arms compared. It has large arms, very well muscled. But since that these are not arm, but you see these are not arms that actually stretch out. These arms don't stretch out very far, and also they don't uh, go go like this all the time. They actually, because basically they, if you move them in a fifth, you have to move them in a 15 degree angle before dislocation to go forward or backwards and also to go like this kind of almost like I'm representing flapping uh, wings here um, you have to go al almost 20 degrees before dislocation and these angles actually show that these are not very nimble arms and basically with Acrocanthosaurus it can't reach to grab its prey it has to get really, really close in order to actually grab its prey. And probably grabbing its prey is not the best idea for Acrocanthosaurus. Because if it tries to grab its prey right away, like say like out of the leg of a Polexisaurus, it's going to get dragged. And so you do not want to get dragged by something that is really big and that your prey can also crush you. Uh, along the way and since the acrocanthosaurus is the theropod has very hollow bones and that is an indication that theropods are closely related to birds and so these since that this there that acrocanthosaurus probably is a little bit faster than Tyrannosaurus rex but it's a very robust kind of animal uh, acrocanthosaurus it's very robust compared to an allosaur or some Carcharodontosaurus, because since that actually has very well, has very big, has very big muscles, very big muscles on its legs, arms, and even in the neck. But even though its jaw strength is not strong enough, that's why we actually see Tyrannosaurus actually the more advanced uh, type of dinosaurs going along in the Cretaceous. And also along its environment, we actually see that uh, the environment of Acrocanthosaurus has pro probably lived in woodlands, probably lived in near swampy areas, near rivers, uh, sometimes the beach. And that's why uh, Acrocanthosaurus actually roams uh, pretty much uh, North America during that time. It probably was the top predator uh, 125 million years ago. But we still don't know how long it actually uh, had we don't know what its range is in terms of geologic time. We don't know how long it actually uh, was around on Earth. That's why there are no rocks dating after uh, 125 million years ago. Basically, 124 all the way to probably like say 100 or 110 million years ago. Because since when you get to 110, that's when we actually see more and more kinds of dinosaurs showing up in North America. So we really don't know uh, what happened. But uh, what could actually be is that um, is that probably is that there might have been a state of erosion uh, during that time, uh, not much of sediment gathering, or otherwise, um, or otherwise just something else. Maybe some of the rocks are just not found yet, and 
and when we actually look at Acrocanthosaurus in terms of its in terms of the animals that are surrounding it, there's some uh, there's some prey animals to actually look at. Of course, Plexisaurus, a giant sauropod. Uh, there's Tenontosaurus, that small, almost iguanodontid uh, type of uh, dinosaur. Uh, there's some armored dinosaurs that actually showed up, like Sauropelta, and Sauropelta is a very well armored type of dinosaur. And also, there's another armored dinosaur called Gastonia that only lived in Utah, but even though, they probably might have ranged in Texas. And uh, when we actually look at its other, its competitors are raptors. Its competitors are raptors. And so the raptorial dinosaurs like Utah Raptor and Deinonychus were actually around during that time. But Deinonychus was probably a lot more, was a lot more common than Utah Raptor, I would actually say, because... Deinonychus would have probably been a lot more common because since it's actually a smaller type of raptorial dinosaur, but even though it actually probably ha it has very good weapons to actually compete against Acrocanthosaurus, but it actually can only try to kill a juvenile uh, Acrocanthosaurus. So otherwise, even before it actually hatched out, it could probably eat the eggs uh, for crying out loud, you know? And so Acrocanthosaurus was a very powerful predator. But you see, since that 125 million years ago, something major, something happened. We don't know what it was. It could have been climate change, could actually be uh, probably one of the, could be actually something else, like new predators coming in uh, to actually take over uh, the region of North America. And also probably the interior, Western Interior Seaway actually was starting to become, was starting to get bigger. And so the oceans were expanding. And so oceans were actually expanding, and so that's why around 100, basically around 100 million years ago, that's why that's when oceans really got got larger. But even though there's still some de there's still some debate on whether or not of like when uh, the oceans actually got bigger. Basically, the seawaters actually got bigger, and so I would probably I would probably say that the that the Western Interior Seaway kind of started to get bigger, and actually, basically, there's no nothing to actually help out um, uh, Acrocanthosaurus to survive, and also the larger prey dinosaurs like Polexisaurus probably disappeared. And when you actually have smaller prey, and you're a dinosaur, and you're a predator that's really designed to capture big prey, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Because what are you really going to go after? Are you going to call? Are you going to go after? Animals that are are that can defend themselves a lot, a lot more, much more sophisticated prey that maybe different dinosaurs could actually capture and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you never know. You never know what happened to Acrocanthosaurus. That's why I think Acrocanthosaurus is still a very cool looking dinosaur. I still need to see the skeleton. I still need to see a really good skeleton. I've seen the skull. I just like to see a really good skeleton in. in basically with my own eyes to actually uh, to kind of actually go get to see how powerful an animal it was and so that's why Acrocanthosaurus is one of my favorite uh, predatory dinosaurs uh, in this kind of and basically on my list in terms of predatory dinosaurs all right that's it but uh, let me actually show you a few things before before we take off here uh, I went to this uh, Rock and Mineral Show uh, last week Saturday, and that's why I actually did uh, an answering questions episode uh, on last week Friday, and that's why I actually because since I had to get extra credit for uh, one of my classes mineralogy. But not only I actually bought uh, uh, not only I bought fossils, but I also bought minerals, and right here, this is fluorite. And I think it's a really cool looking mineral, and I think you can see the break, how it actually breaks. It breaks into cute, kind of almost cube, almost cubical, and that's amazing to look at. I mean, it's fluorite. It's just amazing uh, looking uh, mineral. I love flor fluoride. Also, I actually bought this garnet, and and if you can actually tell here, garnet kind of almost looks like a soccer ball shape. Uh, type of um, mineral, and this is a grossular garnet. And I mean, I can't, I can hardly actually give a, a really good explanation of how, what, what is grossic, grossular, and all that. 
And this one is that if I can get a really good here we go. Here is olivine. It's a green mineral, but even though it weathers red. So when it means weathered, it actually kind of almost erodes in red. And olivine is so beautiful. I love green. Green is my favorite color, and I actually can see and this is this is actually and this olivine is actually on basalt. And it's a volcanic rock. And it's amazing to actually look at olivine. I love olivine. Olivine is one of my favorite minerals uh, to look at. And also I bought agates. Agates are actually a form of quartz. And uh, these are called Lake Superior agates. You can see the di different colors around here. Most, most agates are banded basically banded. Um, this one's not particularly uh, you don't see that much of the banding but you see it's still a good great agate to actually pick up. But like I said I did buy some fossils. Here's a dinosaur bone basically probably from a duck-billed dinosaur. Doesn't, I don't know where it came from probably from on, probably somewhere in North America I'm not totally sure but but uh, this is possibly part of a vertebrae of a of a duckbill dinosaur. And also, I bought a bigger ball, and that probably might be a rib of a duckbill dinosaur. If I can get it out of here, there we go. Look at that. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? This is a dinosaur bone, probably a duckbill dinosaur. Even though it's glued, you can tell by by the wet marks right there. It's glued back together, but. And right around here you can see some of the parts where the marrow might have actually have been. And I believe this is a rib, since that uh, ribs probably don't actually have that much of hollow chambers uh, in, their, in them. And also a very, very cool uh, thing that I actually wanted to get for so long, and it's amber fossilized tree sap. It's very light. If you actually pick up a piece of amber, it's very light because it's not very dense at all. And you can see like the bronze uh, like uh, colors in here. That's the tree, the fossilized tree sap. Love to actually like a pol like this. I'd love to see if I can get rid of some of this matrix and actually um, uh, hopefully possibly get it polished and basically kind of see uh, if there are any insects in there. I'd love to see if there's any insects in there. Uh, but anyway, that's what I bought at the Rock and Mineral Show in Cottage Grove, Minnesota. And since I go to with, go to college in University of Wisconsin River Falls, and that's the college I actually go to to actually study for geology, and they have a good geology program, and so that's why I actually love geology. Geology is a very cool subject of mine that I like to study. All right, that's it for now. And uh, next week we'll actually be an answering questions episode. So. The day after Halloween, that would actually be November 1st. And so, uh, if you got a question about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, uh, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Email is always open 24-7. So, go ahead and actually send me an email and uh, basically keep your questions short and the point. And also, you can uh, post your questions on the Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Uh, like the page. I am 12 away from 100, so hopefully to get to 100 at some point. And uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter at at c s g r a l l at at symbol c s g r a l l in low caps. And I post some pretty cool stuff on Twitter. And also, take care of the people around you. And also, for your younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivations you can have for a good education. It's very important to have a good education because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.